Dr. Power? I guess I've arrived. Thank you, Bonnie Caswell. Hey, folks, come on and have a seat. So please, you could join me. It's uh, week number uh, seven coming up, one more after this, and we're through the long march together, and uh, the dance will almost be over, so I'm pleased to join me today. Uh, a couple of administrative things. First, I'm working on your second set of papers, uh, hard, trying to get them done, and uh, by the time you view this on Monday, my expectation is that you'll have them back by then and uh, done, and the nice news is I'll have 70 more on the weekend to uh, start again, and over the next two weeks try to get 70 done. I'll do my best to get them. You'll certainly have them before the exam, uh, which is on my mind to, to get those to you. Um, on the exam, uh, my intention will be uh, um, next Monday, not this Monday coming up, but in session eight Monday, I will send to you by email the actual exam with locked out the actual questions, but I'll give you a sense of the format, uh, how many words, uh, what I'm expecting, essay, bullet points, etc. It'll be in there for you. Once again, it's closed book. Uh, no big surprise, as I've said, that it's basically you'll get the case on that Monday, and you have a chance, it's in your textbook, you have a chance to talk to your colleagues and uh, read the case, talk to them, see what models they'd use, what issues they see, and so you should be pretty well prepared for a 50% of the exam, uh, having it uh, a week or two in advance, so that should make it easier. And with respect to the first part, there are things like we do in the succession site. There'll be quotes, citations, something dealing with street strategy, and simply ask you to comment on it in the context you see it. And in this class, I think you've seen, we all see from different sides of the hands and different lenses. And so I don't expect that uh, you have exactly the same answer I have, and you don't need that. Uh, time will be your enemy on uh, pushing through this to, uh, to get it completed in the time, roughly 90 minutes for part one and 90 minutes for part two. So anyway, the exam will come out to you on uh, on Monday next. Last week we had a fun little thing. I just poked the bear a little and asked you to look up for a few minutes and look at the uh, at the space junk, and many did, and uh, I think many were quite amazed at what's swirling around our heads, just uh, 100 miles in the air at 18,500 miles an hour. And uh, we talk about environmental problems here on Earth, but uh, there's a junkyard just over our head and we need to do something about it. Well, another question I'm going to poke at you again this week is, you may not have heard of something called uh, global dimming. Not global warming, but global dimming. The Israelis put the first good study out on this, but in essence, the amount of sunlight that reaches the Earth these days is diminishing, it is falling off. And as a result of that, as you know, plants need a certain number of hours to grow. And so there's a, a concern, an emerging issue for uh, the growth of food crops uh, as the sunlight gets shorter. So this week, why don't you take a few seconds and Google uh, global dimming and see what your comments are uh, with respect to that. Um, might be interesting. Well, we've already discussed the big news that has taken place in uh, Alberta, and I'm not going to spend an awful lot of time on that because we picked up the most of it in the tail end of last week. But certainly it was a transformational shift from, from the right-wing Attila the Hun, uh, Stuart Mills, all those sort of folks, over to the collective, to the Plato side. And with that will come brand new direction for a government, uh, great support for unions, Teachers out there will find that uh, what they've been asking for is more likely to get. And uh, I was reading or talking to uh, some of my colleagues at the Cattlemen's Club uh, in downtown Calgary, and they met the day before the election, and I think they saw the writing on the wall. And so many were into their cups just muttering that uh, they've lost control of power. Uh, and so the Cattlemen's Club was, was of interest. Um, but I'm going to make this comment if I can. And it, it's, it's just one of the symptoms that we're having globally. And we talked last week about Ferguson and Baltimore, et cetera, and uh, growing unemployment between the have and the have-nots. And uh, as places like Alberta going through this economic downturn that they have and, and people forced to sell their, their Harley motorbikes and their, uh, and their scooters and their homes and their trailers and their RVs and their second homes, and that's happening with great increasing frequency out there, they get angry, and they get angry at the existing government. So it was no big surprise, in fact, I think we've talked about this on the site prior to the election, that Prentice probably would go. And uh, the same thing would be true, I sense, of Harper and uh, maybe of Christy Clark here in this province. Those provinces, uh, the country as a whole, when the economic turns down, and it is turning down for Canada nationally, um, we will take it out on whatever party is in power. It happens to be Harper. And so uh, we'll watch for that change maybe in the Harper government coming up in the fall if, if uh, the economy doesn't turn around. But it's just one of those symptoms that uh, there's growing disenchantment and uh, who's ever ruling the, pulling the strings at that point gets, gets turfed out. It's an interesting thought. Germany's got a rail strike. And again, just part of what we're talking about. Uh, um, here we have a situation that uh, 
there's just greater union friction throughout Europe and throughout many countries. And the, the rail union in, in Germany is uh, a powerful rail union. It, it uh, moves so much of the, the country's commerce back and forth. And uh, what they're saying, it says here that a strike is poison for the highly developed industrial economy, said the Federation of German Industry in a statement. They're quite concerned the way this is going, and it's going to take a great slice off German prosperity. The, the thing is going to cause something like several hundreds of million euros in loss because of the strike that's currently taking place. And so uh, we can watch the strike there, but increasingly there's this dissatisfaction globally as the globe turns down economically in, in all regions. Um, a few outliers, but basically all economies are struggling a little bit. Um, there's dissatisfaction with, uh, with the ruling parties. California uh, talking once again about weight boards and stricter rules to uh, combat drought. We've talked a bit about that. They want uh, um, a 36% cut in the uh, amount of water use. And to me, folks, this is a self-inflicted wound. They've known this for well over 10 years down there. They failed to build the dams to harness the runoff. They've allowed it to drain off into the ocean. And now they find themselves dry like the three little pigs didn't build their house properly. And so no big surprise they're having trouble. A concern for Canada is, well, they want some of our water to get through the, through this, but they need to be proactive and build some infrastructure down there. And of course, they're in a, in a have-not state. They don't have the money and the taxes and wherewithal to do it. Um, certainly, it, it's something that has to be. But again, no big surprise. I mean, countries are like lifeboats. And uh, if you invite more people into the lifeboat, you've got to have the infrastructure, the schools and the, the, the hospitals and the highways and things to support this. And in California's case, uh, since they knew about the situation about 12, 13 years ago and did a study and the recommendations were to build these things, 10, more, 10 million more people have joined California into the lifeboat. And they require water and they require schools. And if you don't supply that, no big surprise that the, the, the stresses and strains on those that are already in the lifeboat are experiencing. And the same things here in Canada and other things that we, we, we take 250,000 immigrants into the country each year and uh, or we allow subdivisions to be built as we do in Langford in great number, but not a lot of consideration about the infrastructure for the sewer and the water and the, uh, the school infrastructure that's needed and the highways that are needed. But developers have their come, build, move away, and uh, what is left sometimes isn't uh, very pleasant. But we could talk a bit about that this week. Uh, economists warn of a tarnished brand if liberals raise Canada's top tax rate, and uh, Trudeau. Uh, Disappointing. He wants to increase the tax rate on folks making over two hundred thousand dollars a year up to thirty-three percent. That will migrate out into uh, New Brunswick. They'll pay fifty-eight point seven percent in taxes in the run of a year. Uh, Nova Scotia is fifty percent. Manitoba is forty-nine point eight. Uh, British Columbia is forty-nine point seven. Uh, that's basically you're working for half the year for a government before you get any money for yourself, and so. Uh, while I wasn't entirely happy with Harper and the frolic he's been on his own, I think uh, Trudeau, with his idea of taxing uh, the 1%, uh, has lost my vote as well, so I don't know where I'm going with this. But it certainly is an indicator. We're going to see more of that, whether you're talking Greece, you're talking Europe, you're talking Canada, or you're talking uh, here in BC. Incrementally, drip, 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 you'll find the governments are looking for new ways to raise taxes, whether that's increasing BC Hydro, uh, BC Ferries, or the the amount you put in the meters to park your car, they're all ways to get more taxes, more revenue into general revenues, and uh, we'll see this increase. But the danger for us is the more you raise the taxes, folks, the, the less productivity you're going to have from small businesses. They will not be able to hire. And so we need this conversation about the, uh, the need to stop, uh, make do with what you have, uh, as opposed to keep uh, spending. Uh, here's a good example of more spending. A former Tory fundraiser has just been named to the Senate as the Speaker. Um, Leo Hauskoso uh, has just been appointed as Speaker of the Senate. Well, he was a former Tory fundraiser. Does that qualify him to be a Senator and the head of the Senate in, in Canada? Uh, I don't think so, but this is just one of those boondoggle things that we have this, this uh, pork belly basket of money there that... Uh, the party gets to point their friends and family to uh, work in these situations, and the result, you and I are paying for it through these additional taxes we're talking about. Maybe this time we can talk a little about the Senate. Is it we've had to talk about West of an elected Senate? Do we even need the Senate anymore? What's its function? It was set up under the British North American Act as a second sobering thought to look at what the, the House had passed for, 
and to give reflective thought on that. But I have to confess that uh, with Duffy and uh, the long list of characters, I'm not sure that it performs any service anymore that could not be formed by, uh, by the House and putting the backbenchers a little bit more into authority that the Constitution provides for, rather than just the PMO's office uh, directing all the calls in a dictatorship type uh, scenario. But again, the thing we can talk about is the Senate. Elected, happy with it, or should we do away with it? Uh, certainly it's a consideration. The French uh, just increases even more than the Americans and Canadians have gone now to a new, le new piece of uh, legislation, a new bill that will give the authorities the most intrusive domestic spying capability ever, with practically no judicial oversight. Well, 1984 Orwellian, as we have said, uh, we're going to picture all of us down there laying on the ground with a boot in our head, but there'll be a smile on our face because the state, the mother state, is taking care of us. And uh, here's just another example of all the civil rights in France, which is the home of liberty. I mean, that's uh, where a lot of the uh, um, libertary thought uh, came from, political theory came from, that put America in place and democracy. It was the thoughts of uh, political scientists out of... Out of uh, out of uh, uh, France that, that drove that and founded that. And we have the same thing here in Canada, Bill C-51. We've talked about that. It'll soon be law. Uh, many people are expressing disconcern about that because it's uh, an infringement, again, on Canadian human rights. Uh, CSIS, spy agency, they're available to share information with whoever they want to share it with. Big concern to us. Um, and they simply say that uh, if you support terrorism in general, if we say bomb, bomb, bomb in this class, or we have these conversations about our role in the Middle East, that may be enough under this act for them to say that that sufficiently um, offends that we're not reducing terrorism, and therefore I've committed a crime. It, it, it's, it's something we should be on guard for. I say, I'm an old fart moving out. You folks are the decision mind, directing minds. Uh, are you going to allow that and, and be satisfied with that? I hope not. Um, Free the Taxis, uh, an editorial in here in Toronto, New York, etc. Uh, the cartel of taxi drivers and licenses and city and motor vehicle branches that issue these licenses and they're sold between dealers. It's, it's an artificial constriction of, of taxis, so they sell the ticket for a quarter million dollars. It's not unusual for a taxi license. Um, and then the one that gets hurt, of course, is the consumer because the prices are higher for taxis and uh, harder to find a taxi because the, the supply and demand curve has been imp impacted. And here comes uh, Uber uh, saying, let's break that all that down, all part of the new business model that the Internet of Things brings. And so a big editorial in here supporting, frankly, Uber and uh, get rid of these cartels and the taxi industry and, and reform the industry. Um, fair enough. Um, Liberals take heat in Ontario over the uh, hydro union deal. It appears there they're going to actually issue shares in BC in in, uh, in Ontario Hydro to the labor to the union folks there for working, um, and that carries on over the f every fifteen year every, every year over fifteen years they get the equivalent of two point seven five percent of their salaries in shares for fifteen years as part of their pay package. How do you feel about that as uh, folks in living in Ontario and? Uh, um, passing out free shares to uh, to workers as far as their pay package. Um, just on its own, 2.7% of their salaries, I suspect, amounts to uh, far better than the cost of living that most of us put up with. Anyway, have a look at that. Google search uh, requests are shifting to mobile devices away from computers. More people are searching now, not on the computer Google search, but on these little handheld uh, um, cell phones and things, and it's all transferred over there. iPhones are leading the wave on these type of devices. Uh, the feds are cutting the uh, fees for rural areas on TV. Um, this is funny. A uh, landlord wants doggy DNA um, poopetrators. So if your dog poops in these guys' buildings, um, BC landlords, they're able now to take a small sample of the excrement, take it down, have it DNA analyzed, and they're part of their um, landlord lease is that if you have two offenses, then you're uh, in, breach of your, in breach of your contract and you're evicted. Uh, so they're now looking at dog DNA of their uh, excrement. Marvels of science. Interesting to look at. Well, I forgot to mention uh, Bonnie Castle's good friend uh, um, Dan brought up a point too on the Alberta situation that occurred to me, much like the Robin Hood case, that apparently Prentice, immediately after the election, resigned and walked out and says, I'm out of here. And uh, 
My question is, do leaders have a duty, all their workers that supported them the time and effort and money, to stay the course and stay in? Or is it just about me, and if I can't be premier, I don't want to be part of this thing? And is there an ethical responsibility here towards the people who have worked and wanted him in and in great numbers voted for him in? Uh, are there ethical considerations that maybe we should consider? Let's look at Jim Prentice's actions as not just so much for him, but for anybody in that position that uh, if they don't win the game, can they take their baseball and walk away? I'll talk for this week. The dollar continues to rise up to 83 cents. Uh, gold is starting to move uh, just under 1200. Oil is uh, playing around the $60 mark. Um, I think we're going to see uh, the dollar possibly move yet a little higher as, uh, as America, I think, will be dropping, but we'll look at that. Best Buy's uh, innovative, a uh, new business model. They are moving. They closed down uh, 66 of their 258 stores across Canada, all part of this Internet of Things we're talking about, that the online is eating their cake. And so they're moving into the online, closing the retail stores, moving in the online, but in their online model, they're opening up the door to anybody that has the sort of market things that they sell of, of computers and fridges and stoves to come onto their site and use their site and put their products up there as well, which is kind of innovative. It's collaborative. In fact, that's what the Internet of Things is all about. It's a collaborative commons that the, the site doesn't cost much more whether you've got one tel television for sale or five different brands for sale. Um, the cost of getting out to 7.2 billion people to look at your site is minimal. It's not like this newspaper that you have to limit the number of copies. And so the Internet of Things is enabling them to shift their business model to add not just their product lines, but competitor product lines in on their site. I want to watch that. That's uh, kind of interesting, but again, a direction that we're heading. And again, part of the Internet of Things, the closing down of 66 stores, where are those people gone? And that brings us to the, to the next story. Um, Canada's place in world economy depends on educational advantage. And they're stating here something like we've talked about, the importance of uh, a knowledge-based economy, that uh, the only place for workers today is to have something between your ears that there's a market for. It may not be medieval history or something of that nature, but it's got to be something that can be put into place because you can't compete any longer with in a global environment with folks that are working for $2 a day. That, that, that's that's his day gone by. I mean, we're finding that out in, in our car industry. We've talked about in Ontario that the car industry is picking up and moving incrementally to Mexico because the location economies are better there. And all of a sudden, we have plants, facilities, tax bases gone from these cities, and a bunch of blue collar workers that had great paying jobs. I think I did a study at the time of the bailouts, and all in, all their legacy costs and things came up to $79 an hour. That doesn't work anymore. And so they're gone. And that's only short term because part of this, this Internet of Things, that Bank of America, for example, talks in here that um, they're skeptical. They think the U.S. economy uh, is uh, ramping up its R&D spending as share of GMP, but he said Canada is uh, spending less on R&D. We're getting less innovative. We're sliding behind on the uh, idea of, of this knowledge-based economy. And the forecast is not good. He's basically saying that Canada has blown it and... Uh, we're not going to be able to keep up. Uh, we're going to keep on sliding down the uh, down that curve of research and development. Um, he says, with the exception of University of Waterloo, one of our universities in Canada, um, he said uh, they've got eight uh, proud ventures that uh, are, are moving ahead nicely and uh, something to be proud of. But on balance, the rest of us in Canada, uh, we're not working at the pace we should be working. And that's very important. So say we talked to, again about this Internet of Economy. The, um, the, the idea of talking to the Google cars and things like that, so not to repeat, but the idea of banks as a commodity. I mean, um, does it matter to you where you get your mortgage? Do you know your bank manager? You may know the teller, but do you know a bank manager anymore? I don't. I used to be able to know the bank manager. And loans were given out in the three C's of, 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 of your credibility and your credit worthiness, et cetera. And that no longer applies. It's computer driven. You, you go in, you'll see somebody you don't know who fill out a form. They'll plug it into the computer, they'll send it over, and for all we know, a computer on the other end provides uh, some sort of modeling that pops out the other end, yes or no, to your loan application or your mortgage application based on the criteria, like a smart model, based on the criteria they have, whether they're going to give you the loan or not. That idea of an individual making some personal decisions in this thing is lost. And if that is true, that your loans, your mortgages, your RSP loans, etc., are simply reduced to commodity like salt and gold and silver, no loyalty to banks, and banks no loyalty to you. Um, why do we need banks? 
why don't we just go online and say I want a mortgage and pump in the data and some s Google search engine goes and gets your mortgage from wherever it comes from. The, the clauses will be generally the same. And so uh, all that's happening, the stuff we've talked about, and at the end of the day, where are all these people working for the banks go? Because banks won't be required, you just need ATM machines, particularly go to this digital economy that we're getting rid of cash, I'm going to use a piece of paper, a card, and uh, everything's done digitally and your card's uploaded with fresh money on the 1st and 15th. What do you need a bank for anymore? Just do it online. And so all these corner banks stand a chance to be readjusted in their business model as a result of the uh, Internet of Things. It, it's so big and its impact on the, on the traditional capitalism as we know it, there's much in here. In fact, I was talking the other day with the dean about, I think Royal Roads needs not necessarily a specialist in, uh, in, in our MBA program, but it's so important. We certainly need its own course to talk about all the ramifications and how it's going to shape your business and your industry. And we haven't really thought about it enough. Uh, Deloitte said only 13% of people in Canada have really thought about and understand how the Internet of Things and this marginal economy, this, this global collaborative commons and the zero marginal cost economy is going to impact on your business. I know I keep repeating that, but it, I can't underscore how important it is for you to understand that. It's, it's changing uh, all of the business models. Central Bank uh, in Canada uh, is talking about terms of a liquidity crunch being possible, uh, looking out in front, or, and so they're, uh, they're putting uh, more, uh, more measures in place for our banks to be ready for that wave if and when it hits. And one of the things they're doing, they're allowing banks to add mortgages to their acceptable collateral. Most banks have to have a, um, some percentage, 7%, 2%, 3%, 10%, of their bank deposits have to be liquid, um, have to be able to be moved quickly. Uh, and uh, you can play with that number. And that's why the companies went down in the States in 2008. The uh, US government dropped that, that safety valve down to 3%, and it wasn't enough. When somebody walked in and said, I need cash, the banks didn't have the money, and that starts to run on the banks and calling loans, et cetera, et cetera. In Canada, we had a higher rate, so it kind of protected our banks. But now they're saying the banks can take the mortgages as a list of accepted collateral and put it onto their, uh, their books. So we have to watch carefully for that. But more importantly, what we're seeing here is the bank is admitting that all is not well out in front. They're getting ready for, uh, for some sort of bank bubble, uh, particularly in Europe and uh, in, in China. Uh, homes in Toronto are moving up high. Um, HBC um, Holdings, which is the largest bank uh, from Hong Kong, moved its head office to London. London were happy with it as sort of the financial hub over there, but now they put a tax on the bank of, uh, looking for the number here, something in the order of $7.1 billion is what they wanted for their, uh, no, that's not their tax, their tax was, uh, yeah, the levy was 1.2 billion US, 1.2 billion US was their levy uh, for taxes, and the bank says if you keep that up, we can't stay in London, we're going back to Hong Kong, and it's all part of this thing that we're going to tax each other to death, and you're going to find the economies they're going to contract and slow down. It's, it's quite a concern. The, uh, blow my nose. I'm still old-fashioned. I use a handkerchief, French cuffs, and uh, I have any more spats. So it's uh, I'm an old fart. Anyway, um, that's the story there. Um, 3D printing, take your paint away. This is an interesting, innovative little idea. A young man, 22, is using a 3D printer. And I was one of those, uh, many of you may have the same thing. Um, because your body's out of alignment or arthritis, what it happens to be, occasionally you'll go down to a, um, a foot specialist who will put your foot in a cast of uh, plaster and get the proper lay of it, uh, send it out, and they will actually form fit an insert for you for three to five hundred dollars to uh, put inside your shoes to realign your body and, and take some of the pain away. Well, of course, with 3D printing, he says, no problem, let's take a picture of it, and we can use 3D printers to make these things now and uh, bring the cost down significantly. So just one more use for 3D printing. Again, the Internet of Things, and you may have a 3D printer at home, and if so, you can build these things yourself, and you just put a whole bunch of specialists out of work by making your own uh, inserts for your feet. Greece. Greece is troubling. Um, they have to find, but I guess before the end of this course, they have to come up and pay back some money, or this thing's going to hit the wall between the Europeans and the IMF and the uh, uh, European uh, Council money that's been loaned to them. And... Uh, the whole thing is swirling, it's up in the air and what's going to happen there. And so we've had all sorts of move back and forth. We find the, 
recently elected the president of Greece has gone so far as to try to get Putin involved to say, would you bail us out and be part of our things and we'll accept your oil and gas, make it a uh, budget price for Greeks and we can sell you some of our vegetables. Putin doesn't have the money. His, his cash have been drawn down with the price of oil drawing down. So uh, while they still have a couple hundred million, a couple hundred billion dollars in reserves, I doubt he's going to give it away because Greece needs a trillion dollars to solve its problems. So I don't think that's going to happen. But they will start and be anxious to get that access uh, to the Mediterranean. So I think it's very attractive for uh, for Putin to stick the broom handle back into the NATO and those sort of people that were put into him just a little long ago, a little while ago. But I read not in this report, one of the other reports in yesterday's paper about the uh, a lot of suppliers in Greece haven't been paid for four months, and that's the military, that's the army, it's the government, etc. But more important is the hospitals, and so even dialysis machines, dialysis machines for people with kidney functions, uh, the suppliers haven't been paid for four months for the kidney supply to put into the dialysis machine, and they're threatening to say we can't supply you anymore, uh, we can't carry you anymore, and so all this is getting very real and very tense. And we've talked a bit in this class of what it means to the European Union, what it means to the euro, what it means to the other pig nations. And it's just heating up and getting closer. But it's just one more indicator globally of the economy and the slowdown that we're all experiencing and getting ready to weather a storm. Um, gold bugs, uh, again, supporting that. There's a nice article in here about the, uh, the sense that uh, the price of gold now will start coming up because they notice in the States that inflation, um, notwithstanding the, the artificial measure we use, and we don't count things like uh, food costs, etc. But even just the stuff we do measure, it's now starting to take off. Inflation is starting to take off. And uh, with that, that will bring about a whole bunch of things. Um, and so if we have the inflation of uh, rising higher than 2% and moving back up, we've talked in this class already, if it just goes back to historical levels of 4 or 5%, the payments of $285 billion, which we currently pay primarily to China, uh, will go up to $845 billion, just at 4 to 5%. And the $845 billion, almost a trillion dollars, in interest payments to China, pays for a complete increase in their military by fourfold. The People's Liberation Army can be paid for completely by the American taxpayer. And so this is, uh, America cannot afford that in its debt to have that sort of situation. But uh, they're talking terms that recognizing that and the, the fear of the American dollar where the safety of the American dollar may well be in jeopardy with inflation, uh, then all of a sudden the idea of gold coming back up as a safe haven is becoming attractive, and so people may be moving moving there. Folks, that's a bit of today. I hope you had some fun with it all. I'm certainly enjoying these, and just one more to go. Uh, call me anytime you need help. I'm here for you on the weekend. Take care.